في هذه الحلقة من بوتيك المهاجرون الصينيون صنعوا مجد سنغافورة الاقتصادي ومطعم سبرينغ كورت الذي تأسس عام 1929 واستمر مع العائلة نفسها احتفظ بأرشيف النكهة رغم انتقاله إلى مبنى جديد البندانك اسم المؤسس الذي حمله البوتيك أول من قدم البورسلان في فيينا واستطاع أن يستقطب رسومات فنانين عالميين لتزيين أطباق وأوان زجاجية عمرها 300 عام في محيط روما يعتبر الخبز ثقافة هنا في هذه القرية تستعيد النكهة الأصلية عبر عائلة تحافظ على تقاليد العجن والخبز وتنتج رغيفا قد تتناوله بمفرده دون أن يكون مرافقا لأي وجبة إنه أول مطعم في سنغافورة عمره من عمر الدولة نكهة الماضي تجذب الناس إليه وطبقاته الخمس تتسع لمئات من الزبائن الذين يعرفون سبب اختيارهم له My father-in-law is not from here, from China, from China. Then they told you no, know, from China many people they cannot come to Singapore. Like my parents also from China. Yeah, but we born in Singapore. Usually in olden days, people who want to get marriage, there's always a matchmaker, you know? Always a matchmaker. The matchmaker, uh, usually they were introduced. I mean, okay, the I mean the the boy and girl, all right, yeah. And then these two people they don't know each other. Then okay, then one of the matchmaker they were just trying to introduce them. I mean to see each other, yeah. Then usually they will bring them to the restaurant. إنها نكهة المطبخ السنغافوري الأصيل ومبتكرها. مهاجر صيني In Singapore, I don't think you can find any restaurant which has five floors. It's usually first floor or the second floor. It is very hard to find five floors and then go by lift. Yeah, not easy. I don't think it... I, I, can't, I couldn't find it today. In Hong Kong, maybe you can find it, but in Singapore, it's very, very rare. Maybe we are the only one. Uh, this restaurant was uh, started in 1929. 1929. It was uh, actually the earliest was done by my father-in-law, yeah. Until 19, uh, it's in Great World City. Great World at the present moment is Great World City. Until 1978. This is a restaurant we move it from the Great World Amusement Park because the place is going to demolish. Then we just try to move it here at the new bridge road. We have been, we have been doing this, uh, the restaurant business for this place for 13 years. Then later we found this place. This place was empty at all. Then we were thinking to just trying to get our own building. 
just try to buy something. I mean, I mean, it's it's better to have our own property. You know, need to change here and change there. Keep on moving. Then we move it here in two o o two o o four. Move it here in two o four. We have been running for eight years in this place. Yeah. He is a very hardworking person, and then he always try to make sure the dish is perfect. He always have a QC. He was sitting down there. Whenever any dishes pass by, he would just try to check. If you find, sometimes he even go and taste, no good, go back, and then go and cook another plate. Yeah, he is very strict. All the workers must make sure the food is perfect, otherwise you cannot serve. is from Singapore. It's from it's from um, my father-in-law's dish. It, it doesn't mean from uh, from I mean from Hong Kong. No. Our spring cut is a local traditional Singapore cuisine. كما تتعدد الأعراق في سنغافورة تتعدد النكهات وأغلبها لا يزيد تاريخه عن المئة عام. Because this restaurant is, it is, has been doing so long already. It is 83 years today. You know? It has been so long. It is an oldest restaurant in Singapore. I was thinking it's quite wasted to close it, just try to stop it. So far, the restaurant business is still going ahead, it's still going well. I just try. <laughs> We have a Japanese, Korean, U European, American, Australian. Yeah. Yes. All the tourists usually sometimes it was recommended by taxi driver or, or the travel agency. Usually taxi driver they know because this restaurant has a shall I say has a good reputation. <laughs> yeah. Insofern ist es die ideale Gelegenheit hier ähm, diese Tradition und dieses, diese Wertigkeit für schöne Tischkultur und Glas. هدف عائلة ألبندانك الحفاظ على آداب المائدة وعلى تراث مرتبط بتاريخ العائلات الملكية والأرستقراطية في أوروبا ها 
Hello Qatar TV, welcome to Vienna and welcome to this nice place in the heart of the city of Vienna. أن يصبح عمرك 300 عام وتبقى محافظا على ماضيك ومواكبا لموضة عصرك فتلك ثقة لا يحافظ عليها إلا من يتقن مهنته. Dieses Bild zeigt meine Groß Urgroßmutter bei ihrer Hochzeit im 19. um 19. Jahrhundert mit ihrer engsten Familie und auch mit ihrem Mann. Mit dem hat sie dann dieses Geschäft übernommen. Das war dann 1910. Das Geschäft wurde 1702 gegründet und es war damals das Porzellan noch nicht erfunden. Somit hat es einen eigenen Stellenwert gehabt in der K&K-Monarchie. Und es wurden hier eigene Produkte entwickelt, bemalt, dass sie dann dem Kunden verkauft werden konnten. Und es ist sozusagen das erste Geschäft Wiens, das Porzellan verkauft hat. Wir hatten hier im Hause Maler, die mit wunderschönen Bildern händisch bemalt, auf Platten es dann übertragen haben. Und diese wurden dann auf der Porzellanmasse, also auf dem Porzellan, übertragen. بقي البرسلان الراقي حكرا على القصور الملكية وبيوت الأثرياء واكتسب هيبته من قدرته على الاستمرارية ليصبح رفيق المناسبات الخاصة والجلسات المرفهة Ein gewisser Stolz, da hier die Familie auch weitertragen zu können, keine Frage. Um, es wird eine große Herausforderung, doch glaube ich, ist das Potenzial da. Insofern wäre es schade, das aufzugeben. Und wir vor 300 Jahren oder vor 100 Jahren das erste Geschäft waren und momentan es auch sind. Es haben viele andere Mitbewerber nicht überlebt. Und insofern ist es die ideale Gelegenheit, hier ähm, diese Tradition und dieses, diese Wertigkeit für schöne Tischkultur und Glas weiterzuführen. أعمال فنية تجعل فن تنظيم المائدة واقعا وإن اقتصر على النخبة وتجعل المائدة مكانا مرتبطا بالزمن والحضارة من هات إن إنجلاند و إن فرانكريج بورسلان انجيكوفت und die Engländer haben in dieser Art mehr produziert und die Franzosen in jener Art oder auch in dieser dünnen Limoges-Produktion. Ja, mhm. absolut, absolut, ganz sicher, weil eben erstes Porzellanfachgeschäft überhaupt in der Wiener Innenstadt. Ähm, auch natürlich das der Zusatz am Logo K&K Hoflieferant, der für die Geschichte eine immense Tradition hat, der sicher auch in vielen Führern für Touristen präsent ist. Und viele kommen auch nur herein und fühlen sich auch wie im Museum, was ja auch wieder eine gewisse Historie dokumentiert und bestätigt. Musik 
Wir mhm. haben noch immer sehr viele ältere und jüngere Generationen des, der Monarchie. Es sind viele Aristokraten, wie wir sie nennen, die ihre Hochzeitslisten hier auflegen, ihre Großeltern schon hier aufgelegt haben. Riscaldiamo il forno con le fascine perché ci vogliono almeno un'ora e mezza per poter riscaldare il forno. تعودنا نصور كل يوم الكاميرا ما تفارقنا تشهد على لحظات حياتنا وصار تاريخنا مكتوب بالصور اسمي عبد الله المناعي وانا مصور وهذه هويتي وليست مهنتي العائلة بأكملها تعمل في المخبز وتحافظ على نكهة تخطت حدود هذه القرية الصغيرة لتصل أبعد من حدود روما Sono andata a comprare 12 kg di farina, ho incominciato a impastare e ho fatto 12 pezzi di pane da 2 kg. Ho visto che ero troppo, sono andata a accompagnare i bambini a scuola e mi sono fermata da una signora dicendo ho fatto un po' di pane in più, lo volete un po'? È venuto, dice sì sì, e ci ha portato un pezzo di pane. Da quella signora mi ha chiamato, ci sta un altro pezzo, sì. Eh, mamma, ho, tutto, ho finito tutto il forno di pane. La mia giornata consiste di scendere verso l'una di mattina e incominciare ad accendere i forni e preparare già l'impasto per la giornata in corso. Riscaldiamo il forno con le fascine perché ci vogliono almeno un'ora e mezza per poter riscaldare il forno. che ha iniziato mia mamma e poi si è aggiunto mio padre e hanno mandato avanti l'azienda e l'hanno fatto crescere. Poi mi sono sposata e mio marito che comunque aveva le mani in pasto perché era un pizzaiolo ha preso le redini del, del panificio e, e quindi sono 12 anni che io e mio, mio marito abbiamo ereditato il mestiere dei miei genitori.
la distinzione di questo pane è soprattutto della lievitazione che è assolutamente naturale fatto con il criscito cioè lievito madre e poi c'è la forma o rotonda oppure allungata viene cotto assolutamente a legna fatto con forni di pietra refrattaria che arrivano ad una temperatura di 400 300 400 gradi Già da giovane con mia mamma lo facevamo per uso nostro però. Ogni cortile ci stava il suo forno che lo faceva per i famiglia. È una cosa che piace molto, mi è sempre piaciuto di farlo. È una tradizione che deve continuare sempre, che è una cosa piacevole. Economicamente è pure lavorativa che è una cosa bellissima. Lo facciamo partire, arrivare un po' in tutto, in tutto il mondo. La pizza, con lo stesso impasto facciamo anche la pizza, che è molto sottile, quindi è la caratteristica della nostra pizza, e la condiamo sia col pomodoro, o con le patate, oppure con la cipolla, o semplicemente impasto di pane, olio extravergine e sale. Oltre al pane facciamo molti derivati del, dall'impasto del pane, Uh, la frisella, il vascuotto. Il pane è proprio ricchezza, soprattutto qui nel, nel sud è proprio una, una grande ricchezza. È importante proprio per questo motivo. E poi c'è proprio la cultura del pane. Non possiamo fare almeno per esempio della fascina, che è una caratteristica per accendere i nostri forni. Non possiamo fare a meno della, della panara, che deve essere assolutamente di legno, non possiamo fare a meno dei cestini, che anche quelli devono essere assolutamente di legno, perché quelle sono le nostre radici e quella è la nostra tradizione e con quello noi dobbiamo andare avanti.